Hey everyone, Retire on Dividends here. I'm back to make another monthly update to my Retire Now account. Uh, this account is my taxable brokerage where not only do I invest in high yield dividend funds, but I also do some options trading. And as time goes on, I'm doing more and more actual options trading myself because I'm finding I can do, you know, yield a much better income versus investing, you know, in the uh, high yield ETFs. When I started the journey, it was all high yield ETFs. And then I eased my way in uh, via options because I didn't trust myself. So now I'm getting to a point where I'm doing more and more options. But anyway, we can get into that. So what you see here, this is the tab, uh, obviously showing the 10-1 date. Uh, this is the update for September month end. And I'm going to go in order of ticker. Um, no particular order, really. Uh, it's just, you know, been in the order that it has been. Um, maybe based on purchase in the beginning, I don't even know. But anyway, let's start at the top. So AMZY, um, I was able to purchase additional shares this month. To, so I have 280 shares at the moment. Um, by the way, I do have a column for risk, which I could probably honestly delete that. That's just like in the way. So let me, um, I'll work on that, but just ignore that for now. So maybe just look margin maintenance. What does that mean? I use margin now. So, you know, and each brokerage has their own margin maintenance qualification based on the fund. The lower the percentage, the more you can borrow based on that fund. Uh, so 50%, obviously it's halfway, 50% is a really good number. So um, margin maintenance, 50%, anything um, below 100% is good. Obviously 50% is, is perfect. So anyway, I have 200, 280 shares now of AMSI. Uh, I was able to lower my cost basis throughout the month. So now my cost basis is 21.23. AMZY is sitting at 19.43. Uh, so obviously I'm down on capital. If I look at my current allocation percentage, it's 9.3%. So of this entire portfolio, AMSI is 9.3% of it. Current investment is $5,440. You know, That's how much I put into it. Capital gains, I am down $504 on paper. This month I have made $170, $170.59 via you know, distribution, that is a yield on cost of 34%. Again, I strive for an average of 40%. So this month, AMZ was not able, you know, to boost me above. However, I do have others that help. So my new updated total distributions for AMZY is 1,997, which puts me at 33% house money, which means I you know, based on my original investment, so far I got 33% of it back. Total return, which includes distributions plus capital gains or loss, um, I'm at a positive $1,493, which is a 25% total return, so not bad at all. NVIDIA is next, they also have 50% margin, and guess what, I was finally able to add additional shares to NVIDIA. Um, as you know, I've been sitting at 180 um, forever, and I finally added 20 additional shares, 10 one day, 10 another day, um, because it went under my cost basis. NVIDIA was tanking, so NVIDIA was tanking, and it went under my cost basis. So I averaged down my new cost basis, 21.56. NVIDIA has since recovered. They're at 23.96, so I'm actually uh, ahead on capital, as usual for them. Uh, current allocation. Uh, they are 8.19% of my portfolio. My current investment is about 47.92. Capital gains, again, this is just on paper. I'm up $480, which is good. Monthly distribution, they paid me $243 this month. Yield on cost, 67%, which is amazing. Uh, updated total distributions, $3,716. So based on my original investment, they have paid me back now 86% of that money. So I'm almost at 100%. Now, if you take total return, which again is uh, distributions plus capital gains, I'm actually up 97%.
So this, you know, NVIDIA I'm doing uh, very, very well. Next is Nefli, uh, also 50% margin. I was able to add more shares of them. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but they're 7.6% of my portfolio. I am down 236 uh, $236 dollars on paper. Their yield on cost is 32%. And I'm at 40% house money with them. Total return on them, 35%. Next is Phoebe. They are 30% margin. So I don't know. I guess Shab likes Facebook. Or maybe they like Phoebe. Maybe like the Phoebe fund manager. Um, so... I have 220 shares of them, which, which is, uh, you know, I increased this month as well. Current allocation for Phoebe, 7.51%. Uh, I'm actually up. So this was red the other day. I'd have to make this green now. I guess they had a green day recently. Uh, so I'll make that green. So Phoebe, I am up $19.80 on paper. Uh, monthly distribution, they paid me one twelve twenty. Again, not nothing crazy. That's a 30% yield on cost. Total distributions around 687. House money 15%. Again, super low. Kind of a newer fund for me. Um, total return, I'm up 16%. Now, as you know, I never really owned Kony. I recently bought into Kony as more of like a swing trade. I'll buy on the dip. When it goes up like 10%, I'll sell it. So I've been buying on the dip and been buying on the dip ever since. But I'm okay with it because they pay a good distribution. And they're actually 50% margin, so that's fine as well. So I now own 150 shares of Kony. However, you could see my cost base is 1464. Their trade price is 1340. So not terrible. Uh, capital gain wise, um, I'm down 186, and they're a low allocation still of the account. They're only 3.43% of the account. Their yield on cost, however, is awesome, 62%. So that's really good. They pay me 114 this month. Um, obviously, house money is irrelevant because the newer fund and total return. I'm down overall, so that kind of sucks too. All right, so that's the first five funds. Let's go into the next five funds. Um, now, don't be scared, don't be worried. But anything that's gray, I did sell, and I'll get into why on each. So, Ymax, I sold, yes, but first, um, actually, yeah, I don't have to, they didn't even, they didn't pay me a monthly distribution. So, all right, why did I sell them? To be honest, there's a couple reasons. As soon as they went weekly, I just, I, I was done. I, I'm, I don't have, I'm, I don't want weekly funds in my uh, Retire Now account. I track this account for monthly income. I want monthly income on my um, amounts. Tracking weekly is a massive pain in the ass, all right? That's one. Number two, um, Yield Max, they keep adding, you know, you know, a lot more funds and I'm noticing it's kind of, it is affecting the performance of YMAX overall. You can see why mag is, you know, it's continuing to be a much better fund because they're not just adding whatever, you know, they're, they have the Magnificent Seven and that's it. Why Max is adding, you know, companies like Snow or, you know, Moderna. And I know Moderna has been there, but still you get what I'm saying. I don't, I'm not going to invest in Moderna. On my own, right? I'm not gonna invest in Disney on my own, right? I'm not gonna invest in freaking snow on my own. So, do I need WiMAX? I I get it's super diversified, but no, the answer is no. Weekly was the last straw because I, I again, I'm it's an annoyance to me. I know it makes no sense, but I don't want to track weekly payments coming in. Plus, I was just I just thought it was completely ridiculous. But anyway, YMAX is gone, all right? That's why it's gray. Ulti is now a larger position. Now that YMAX is gone, Ulti still pays monthly. However, actually, it's not monthly. I'm sorry, it's every four weeks, but 13 times a year. I added now, I own 500 shares of Ulti. Look at their margin maintenance, by the way, 30%. Like, I mean, I'll take it, but I don't understand Schwab. All right, my cost basis on them is twelve twenty six. I thought it was lower based on what I, you know, my, it's weird. My thicker swim is still not sinking with my Schwab, so I don't even know if this is that. I just use the uh, Charles Schwab cost basis versus the thinker swim, but it shows twelve twenty six. So I'm down on capital. Um, 
Ulti's 9% of my account. Why is it 9% of my account? Because they changed their prospectus to give it more flexibility and it's in effect for this month, the month of October. So I have high hopes. Could it be crap? Sure. Could this fund continue to lose money? Sure. But whatever, that's the risk, all right? Anyway, capital gains, I am down $845 on paper. Yeah, that sucks. That really sucks. Monthly distributions, I got 294, which is good. Yield on cost, 57%, which, I mean, it sucks, but at least it's over 40. That's my goal. Updated distributions, they've paid me a total of 988 so far, only at 16% house money. Total return, am I up? 143, 988. Yeah, I got 98.88 minus the 8.45. Okay, so total return, I am up on ulti. All right, so now back to weekly payers. All right, WDTE, which is Jeppy, IWMY, and, oh, well, yeah, I sold QQQY last month. So I sold the, the uh, two Defiance funds because they switched to, to weekly. However, I'm not done with them. I did add them to another account, and that's my dividend car account. That that account has a simple goal, to pay me monthly income and to pay the car payment. And then obviously the rest gets reinvested. And I'll talk about that account in a separate video. Obviously, I, I already did my first dividend car account update, uh, but I'll get into that. But long story short, all of the round hole funds and all of the defines funds um, that pay weekly will be in there. Okay, so that's why I sold them. Did Oh, did they pay me this month? Uh, yes, they did. WTDTE or JEPY paid me 192. IWMY paid me 257. So obviously, I need to make up that money in this account. QQQT, I sold out of them. I sold out of QDTE and I sold out of SVOL. I sold QQQT and SVOL because they're 100% margin maintenance. I made a decision. I said, I'm no longer going to hold anything that is 100% margin maintenance because I need you know, as much margin available as possible because I'm using that for options trading, all right? And it helps me. The more margin available for options trading, the more money I can produce each month, all right? No offense to you, QQQT, you're an awesome fund. And no, no offense to SVOL, you're an amazing fund. Will I buy you in the other account someday? Maybe, I don't know. But right now, you don't fit what's needed in this account. QDTE, as mentioned, that's a weekly paying fund, and that's going to be part of the dividend car account. As far as who paid me this month, QQQT did pay me $31.84, and QDTE did pay me $62. So they did help boost up my monthly income for this month. All right, what's left? Spy I, they're staying in the account. They're, thank God, because they're 30% margin maintenance. And that's a beautiful thing. And I love Spy Eye. However, I still only own 70 shares because it hasn't gone under my cost basis. And I'm trying, trying to not average up. It's not easy. So anyway, they are six, only 6% 6 of my portfolio. I would love them to be higher. But I am up $240 in capital gains. They did only pay me $36 because their yield on cost is, you know, it's only 12.95%. Obviously, that's not helping my 40%. But I'm okay. You know, I can have ones that are lower as long as I have, have ones that are higher, right? You know, these lower ones, they boost me up in different ways. Um, it's just plus, you know, they have their own benefits. Um, you know, but I'm not going to have too many that are below 40%. Like Spy Eye and Fepi are the exceptions. Um, so total distributions only have 462 total return i'm up 21 percent on spy i with capital gains plus distributions all right fepi again 30 percent margin awesome i did add 10 shares for this month um cost basis though it's it's not good it's 54 dollars. trade price is at 51 current allocation of the account uh 9.63 percent of my account capital gains i'm down 382 okay that's whatever so my yield on cost, you know, it's not 25%, right? If I bought at the current price, yes, my yield would be 25%. But my yield, I mean, my cost basis kind of sucks at the moment. So I'm actually only yielding 21% myself. Updated uh, 
distributions, I'm at 798, 13% house money, total return, I'm up 6.9% on FEPI. All right, so now that, those were the high yielders. Now we'll talk about the, the option stocks. These are the four stocks I trade options on, TSLL, TNA, Bitex, and SOXL, okay? So um, I did, you know, these have various margin maintenance. Anything that's 100% margin maintenance, I will not trade options on. Bitto is 100% margin maintenance. That's why I'm not trading. I would trade Bitto over Bitex if they were 50% margin maintenance. But Bitex is 50%, so I'm trading Bitex. Again, both are pretty good options. Uh, Bitto has a much better distribution than Bitex, but whatever, man, whatever. It's all good. So now these I track in a different um, file. So let me show you um, that file. I did make a tab for them this month. So you could see for Bitex, I sold calls, I made 187. I sold puts, I made 229. So in total for Bitex, they paid me $416 in options premium. Awesome. SOXL, uh, I sold puts, never got assigned. Uh, I made 291 in options premium. I sold puts on TNA this month. Uh, I also made 291. Wow, they're just exact. Again, I did not get assigned, or it's either that, right, or I did not sell calls yet. So, but in both examples, I didn't get assigned. TSLL, I always get assigned, right? So I did sell calls 175 worth and I sold puts 523 worth. So I made 698 on TSLL. You could see the total, the grand total. I made $1,696 in options, which, you know, that's a record for me, right? Because if I go here under the options tab, you could see month to month how much I'm making. Um, last the month prior was a record, 1021 This month, 1696 So really good stuff. And that's going to help boost my monthly income. All right. So how am I able to do that? Because I'm selling out of these other funds. I'm shrinking my portfolio. And I'm doing more and more options on my own. So obviously, you can see now uh, monthly distributions broken down. You know, 698 TSLL. Uh, 291 TNA, Bitex 416, SOXL 291. Wait, Bitex 4... Was it? Yeah, 416. Was that right? I guess so. Either way, uh, also, uh, I use margin. But keep in mind, when I do use margin, typically it's only being used when I sell puts. So when I sell puts, it's essentially cash on hold. So if margin is being used as cash on hold... There's no interest charge. However, if that cash on hold turns into assignment, which means they have to use that money to purchase the shares, which means my puts got assigned, then I'm going to get charged margin interest because I'm actually physically using the money. So throughout the month, yes, I is used some margin. So they did charge me $6.27. My margin interest rate is around 12%. So... You know, obviously, I consider that worth it, especially, you know, the way I'm using it. So obviously, $6.27 did not put a dent um, for what, you know, obviously I made this month. So here's the monthly uh, recap. Um, so current, alloc uh, current investment, I have $58,000, 58521 Capital gains overall, I'm down. I guess this could be red. Again, I'm down on paper, uh, but with most of these funds, that is kind of normal. Monthly distributions, uh, including options premium, I made $3,442.55. Uh, total distributions and updated, I mean, that's kind of irrelevant because, again, I, I've been selling out of funds. But in total return with what's in my account, I'm up $12,505. All right, so now let's go to the summary tab. This is the tab you guys like. Oh, again, I have goals, right? I have goals to reach for the month of September. All right, so I'll pull up September and last month up. My goal was to have $2,858.44 income. That was at least my estimate in column B. So this month I had $3,442 in income. So obviously that's really, really good. 
Um, however, my estimate goal for capital, I was hoping to be at $60,027. Right now, I am at $58,521.98. But again, it's because I'm down on capital on a lot of these funds because these high yield funds typically they sometimes they pay out more than what they actually make. So I did add capital depreciation at the top. I did not put a number in, but I'm considering doing that. However, I really don't think I need it the more and more I trade options myself because when I trade options myself, I never lose capital. It's just the strategy I use uh, that I make sure I do not lose capital. In fact, I only gain capital. All right, so now under the uh, actual as well, what did I yield? You could see the 70% in column F. I yielded 70%, you know, my, that's my yield on cost overall, 70%. My goal, it was always 40%, but now again, I have to boost it up because I'm using margin. So to be fair, I have to increase the goal. So yield with margin is 60%, okay? Um, so yes, I exceeded the goal with that. However, my capital gain, um, you know, is, is down of 2.51%. So that's okay. However, if you look at next month, you know, there is no forgiveness in the capital. So as we go, you know, the goal is capital flat. It always was. So now you can see, like, I, I have to hit 63,000 next month. So, you know, in order to do that, I really, I, I need some appreciation or I need to even boost up my income um, that much higher, but we'll see. We'll see if I can catch up to the capital um, while obviously hitting, I'm hitting the dividend income um, easily. Have I hit it every month? Yes, every month except the first month I have hit my goal. So, so far so good. So as long as I hit that, that's really what matters. This is an income account. It's not a freaking capital account. Obviously I want high capital. I want you know, I can't wait to hit 100,000. That's a huge milestone, but I'm not even close to that. So I can't even think about that. So it's really the focus is income. Now, if we go, if we fast forward and we go, you know, to thinking, okay, how much per month do I need to retire? Right? If you think of a household of four in the state of New Jersey, little kids, what do you think? Like 200K, right? Or let's just say, to make it easy, 240K, right? Which would be what, you know, 12,000 a month. So if we scroll down, when am I gonna make 12,000 a month per this calculation? 12,000 a month would happen March of 2027. So obviously that's pretty far away, right? And then even then, does that give you a comfort level or do you want more? So let's just assume 20,000. So that would be January of 2028. Because again, the end goal here is, you know, of course, you know, people yell like, oh my God, you're paying taxes. Well, yeah, I'm paying taxes because my end goal is to use this money. Um, of course, yeah, if it was in a Roth, I wouldn't have to worry about the taxes. But the problem with the Roth um, is I can't use the money until I'm 59 and a half, right? So what good is that? You know, that's just that's just giving giving in. You know, it's like saying I'm definitely going to work till 59 and a half. I'm 42 right now. I don't want to work till 59 and a half. I want to retire at 45, latest 50. I don't have a set goal right now, but it's around that range, if not sooner. And of course, yes, I know I could take out the contributions of the Roth, but I mean, what what good is that? You know, again, I'm building an account where the overall income is being used. Okay. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. We'll see how this plays out. Um, you know, obviously, if we look out, let's say right now, five years from today, where will I be? Again, based on this calculation. So we go to September of 2029. Where will I be? $53,000 in monthly income with a $1.1 million portfolio. Is that realistic? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, again, the capital has been unrealistic, but so far the monthly income has been un, you know, realistic. And you can see this is now 13 months in. Um, so again, I started in September of 2023 with $41,000. Um, I was contributing um, in the beginning and then I stopped. I've stopped for a while. So I'm not putting any new money in except for the, um, I have this emergency thing. Let me zoom out. 
there it is. Uh, assistance column, column H, you can see I did put the, you know, $100 in this month to help boost the capital. So that's like a cheat code for me. Um, so I'll do that, you know, when it's needed or when I can, when I can, right? Again, I have bills, so we'll see. But I'm not touching this money. This is my emergency income account, but so far I haven't had to touch it. Um, so, so far, so good. But anyway, here's the recap. Uh, monthly income, 3442 for the month of September. My current capital sits at 58,521.98. Uh, 58, I yielded 70% of my total capital, which, you know, this is better than I thought would be. So hopefully next month goes even better. But we shall see. And again, so when we go here... Again, I sold a lot of funds. So if you go here now, this is next month. I know I'm jumping ahead. I only have eight funds now. So I have eight funds and the rest, you know, am I happy with these eight funds? My eight funds are AMZ, NVIDI, Nephli, Phoebe, Kony, Ulti, SpyEye, and Fepi. I'm fine with 10. So if I find two more, I can add them, sure. But the rest, again, I'm doing more and more options trading myself because obviously you could see, you know, how much I made in options versus how much I made in the other funds. Um, and you know, it's, it's almost, you know, taken over. Um, but yeah, obviously I have a lot of income to make up first, right? I sold out of the defiance funds. They paid out a mo monster of a dividend. Um, I got used to no S fall and YMAX this month. So next month I'll just, again, I have to replace that defiance income and then some, but hopefully I have some good options trade this month. Hopefully I do well. Um, but we'll see. We'll see, guys. I've, you know, everything's been working out. If the market crashes, then what do I do? Um, then I figure it out, right? Just like we all do. Um, I'm not going to think about that. That's everyone's favorite question. You know, what if the market crashes? Oh, I didn't even tell you guys how much, if I profited on these or not. YMAX, I ended up down, uh, total return to 2%. QDTE was a profit of 1%. QQQT, profit 3%. SFO was a profit of 11%. JEPY, a profit of 9%. This is total return when all said and done after I sold. And then IWMY, uh, I profited 10%. So in, in the end, actually only YMAX was the loss. Uh, total return wise, I did you know pretty good um, you know, overall, which again, not bad. Um, so yeah, that's that's the update. Um, and oh, netted, you know, between capital gain loss and dividends, I actually made $1,123 total return between these uh, these six funds. So again, it wasn't a loss, which is, you know, does that matter? Yes, total return matters. All right, guys, so that's my update for the Retire Now account. Hopefully that helped you guys out. Hopefully this is somewhat motivating to some. Uh, I do this account update once a month. If you want it any more frequently, I don't know what to tell you. But, you know, um, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe I have more time in the future. You never know. All right. If you have any questions on this account, please let me know in the comments down below. Uh, if you enjoy this content, please hit the like button. But as always, this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. This video is for fun and entertainment. So hopefully I had fun. Hopefully you're entertained. If not, we will try again next month. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think of the portfolio. With the recent changes, let me know what you think of the income. Let me know what you think of the options. Um, is a goal of yield with margin of 60% too aggressive? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Let me, let me know what you guys think. All right, guys. Um, that's all I really got for today or this month, I should say. Uh, hopefully, you, you guys enjoyed the video. And I will talk to you later.